NSA, National Security Agency, and apparently they got into trouble with uh, Chancellor Merkel. And how did they get in trouble with Chancellor Merkel? Well, Merkel apparently was making phone calls, and they were tapping her phone. Well, I understand that uh, Chancellor Merkel was actually on a vacation recently, and she was thinking about traveling to France. Do you ha did you hear that in the news? Yeah, I think she was at the border, and the uh, border guard said, well, where are you from? And she said, Germany. And then they said occupation. She said, no, just here for vacation. Oh, no occupation this time. Yeah, just vacation. Okay, so I do understand that the NSA um, tapped her cell phone as well as the leader of Brazil, as well as the leaders of France and England. I mean, it seems as though the NSA has gone b beyond our borders in the search of information. Well, it's, you know, a lot of people would argue that the NSA, you know, spies on, uh, you know, friends and foe alike. And they spy on us, so it's okay. But why is it that it's, uh, it seems only in the last few years they seem to have expanded their spy system so to everybody on the face of the earth? I'm not sure how that came about. Well, I think there might be some countries that would be insulted. They weren't spied on. I mean, look at some countries that are saying, like, why didn't you tap us? Why aren't we important enough to tap? <laughs> to tap? You know, so, I mean, you know, maybe that's the worst thing is to be left out. But I think this has probably been going on for a long time, but Snowden revealed a lot of this, and so... Maybe more of this. When you talk about Snowden, you're talking about <laughs> the, the guy that uh, went through a rudimentary background check, then got handed a top secret clearance, and then walked away with an entire database. Is that who you're talking about? Well, I'm saying the databases now are so, un you know, talking about Obamacare, apparently you can hack it. Most people can, you know, hack into Obamacare if you're like the, you know, junior hacker. So, I mean, the government has huge amounts of information on everybody. And basically, um, I think what you would say is anything you text, Anything you say on the phone, anything you say over the computer, it's basically like sending a postcard, you know? Uh, and what you mean is every, everyone can read it whenever it crosses. So you well, have no well, expectation of privacy. Well, Isn't that what you're talking what about? What I'm saying is that, you know, you're supposed to have privacy, but, you know, you always get these emails saying, oops, you know, this was all revealed, you know? So, I mean, that happens more and more. So I, I think it's a real problem that uh, th that all this, but basically everything is kept. Wait a minute. I thought we were, we were under the Fourth Amendment, that, that we still live under the U.S. Constitution. And in the Fourth Amendment, I thought we had privacy rights for our, the people, the places, the things, the papers. All that data is supposed to be private, and we should have an expectation of privacy. Well, I'm sure, well, Verizon, Verizon, looks, I'm sure Verizon, hey. Verizon looks at it like that. Yeah, but Verizon does. But I also <laughs> understand the NSA, as we talk about the NSA, they think... Everything's allowed, that there is no expectation of privacy. Well, that's because the 215 of the Patriot Act. Yeah, and 215 of the Patriot Act said, but even under 215, Section 215 of the Patriot Act, you're still supposed to have only investigation that relates to international terrorism or anything that would be disruptive to the, the peace and the calm in the United States effectively. So I'm not really clear how... And you brought up Verizon. I'm not sure why Verizon would just hand over their entire database to the NSA and said. Go for it. Well, it's just so they said boo. Well, you know that, uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, there is a Supreme Court case last year with, Soda, with uh, Sotomayor writing the majority opinion where she actually started pushing back on this idea that we have no expectation of privacy in the highly tech technology world. And that was the fact that uh, police were just attaching GPS devices to any vehicle without a warrant, without re just to, you know, kind of fishing expeditions to follow people around to see what they're involved with. So in the Supreme Court decision last year, it was indicated that that was a violation of the Fourth Amendment. So you can't do that anymore. But I'm wondering how close is the NSA going to be looked at when they can just literally tap every cell phone, every text, every tweet, every email, every Facebook, every LinkedIn, anything. Well, I don't think it's – they're tapping. I mean, I think everything – They're like, copying everything. No, I mean, everything goes – They're into, storing everything. Yeah, everything's stored in Utah somewhere in a big – I, I think it's in Utah, right? There's yeah, it is then. Okay, everything that you do goes in there. It's just a matter of sorting it out. And uh, and I guess what the what the reason is or how they evade the warrant is they say, well, we're just looking for patterns. We're not looking at particular people or something like that. But it's kind of funny because, you know, sometimes they do end up looking at particular people. Well, and that's then how do, you, how do you go from this broad kind of looking for patterns to... Well, this is a political enemy I don't like too much. Let's make sure they can't vote like, say, the IRS did for the uh, Tea Partiers. Right? Right. They said, okay, you can't do a 501c. We're going to hold you up. We're going to ask you questions. We're going to investigate all your friends. I mean, and that just tends to happen. So, I mean, 
Now what do you mean it tends to happen? Well, it tends to happen when you have a government that believes that in a central government. When you have a central government that believes in central planning, um, then, of course, they're going to use those tools because that's how a central government works. Yeah, but see, isn't that more of a totalitarian regime? Well, yeah, it is more t tyrannical. Yeah, it is. Um, but it's very efficient. Well, it's efficient only because they control the populace down to their thumb. Well, it's efficient for them. Yeah, it's efficient for them. <laughs> what about the rest of us? Don't we have an expectation of privacy under the Fourth Amendment? Shouldn't the Fourth Amendment actually work whether or not we're in high-tech age or back in the days when we had Pony Express? Well, I, it's, I'm, it's not, an, I'm it's, not getting this it's at It's an all. interesting idea. Google has said that, look, um, if you send something by Gmail, right, you've given up your right because um, it's just like the secretary opening your mail. Yeah, but Google's not my secretary. Yeah, and that, I think that analogy is not correct exactly for that reason, because my secretary would be my agent. Google's not my agent. But what they're saying is that, you know, anything you send through Gmail is they can go through and mine and do whatever they want and look at it because they're trying to figure out what to well, sell. Well, I thought you. they already got in trouble over all that, and they were supposedly going to give us back that privacy, or is, this, is that just an illusion no, no, that I we hear from the google -ots? No, I mean, I think their last response to that was, no, we get to look through everything. You, yeah, but you for, get up for what way. reason? Because you took their free, we use their product. free service. No, right. you're using a free service. Right. Now, right, if you're okay. doing a paid service, I think you have more expectation of privacy. So the question is, if I'm, if I'm emailing from a paid service to a Gmail, okay, does that wipe out my expectation of privacy? Well, I don't the know. answer seems to be if yes, because well, Google says they, anything that crosses their lines becomes their property. And I also understand they were getting in a lot of well, trouble Well, I think they can that. also sell it. I think they can also sell. Well, wouldn't that be the same idea yeah, of selling yeah, yeah. a sales list right, of right. people that buy certain clothes <clears throat> or buy whatever? Right. Well, so so that's, you know, and then also you know, if you Skype something, that never goes away. If you text, text something, they never go away. All these things are, you know, discoverable. All these things, you know, so you got to remember that anything you do electronically now is a permanent record. And apparently, um, you know, there's not a whole lot of protection because the Fourth Amendment seems to have been kind of... Uh, Compromised. Uh, well, the Patriot seems to have affected it, and it seems like just the technology is moving pretty quickly. But I'm saying, okay, okay, let's say I send a letter, right? And, I, and it gets dropped in a mailbox. And I'm walking down the street. I open your mailbox. I can open that letter. I mean, physically, that can happen a lot of times, right? Correct. I could go down. There could be a mailbox that people drop their mailbox. I could take a hanger with some gum on it fish out some letters and open them, right? It's physically possible, right? But that's still a federal crime. Right. You're not supposed to do it. You have an expectation of private. Not only that, there's a presumption. If I mail a letter, you receive it, which means people aren't intercepting it. Okay. So I don't really see the big difference. It's just a matter of what the law says. If the law says you can't pry into electronic communications, I think it would stand as much as paper communication. I agree with that. Yeah. But I think what I do right now is I think we ought to get to our last...